Hi folks, Fusion 360 just released both ways adaptive. Let's talk about what it is, where it might be useful, where it's not going to be helpful, and take a couple test cuts to see how it does. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. To understand what two-way or both-way adaptive is, let's rewind a second and take a look at what adaptive is. If we were to machine this pocket with a traditional or non-adaptive toolpath, this is the sort of toolpath we're going to get. And the significance is the corners. When the tool's moving along an open contour, we have constant engagement of the tool. It's cutting an equal amount of material. The problem is those corners. As we move into the corner, the amount of what's called the tool engagement angle. In other words, the tool is now cutting from over here all the way around to here. Whereas if you rewind a second, the tool is just cutting on a relatively small portion of the cutter face. This has a lot of implications ranging from tool deflection, horsepower requirements, chip evacuation, and process reliability. And that's where adaptive really shines. If we keep the tool and the speeds and feeds the same, but we just switch from a standard cutting operation like 2D Pocket and move it over to the adaptive style strategy, take a look. The toolpath is completely different and it does so to keep a constant engagement. So no matter where we are in this cut, we're asking the tool to do the same amount of work. It's never loading up into the corner. And that's why as it approaches corners, we see these progressively smaller cuts. One of the most common questions that we see when folks first see an adaptive toolpath is, don't these linking moves that are shown in yellow here, don't they mean it's a much slower toolpath? Because the machine's not cutting, it's just repositioning the tool in air. And the answer to that is, well, it depends. The trade-off with adaptive is you're able to run the tool harder because you're never gonna surprise that tool with a disproportionate or increased amount of material. So we're able to use optimized speeds and feeds for the whole cut instead of having to decrease our speeds and feeds for the whole toolpath just so that we don't overdo it when we hit, say, a corner. But the idea of trading off those yellow linking moves where we're not cutting four actual cuts is the idea behind both ways adaptive. So how do we do a both ways adaptive? In any 2D adaptive, under the Passes tab, we now have the option to check both ways. And when we check both ways, we've got a few new options. The first is optimal load the other way. What does this mean? Well, when we're running a, a regular adaptive, we're always climb cutting. And when we check both ways, that's one of the trade-offs is we're gonna be moving the tool the other direction and that's gonna result in a conventional cut, not a climb cut. The other thing that we may want to do is reduce the feed rate or the inches per tooth or inches per millimeter, basically slow the cut down. The real question is, is it better? And how do I know it's better? Here's what we have found. Both ways adaptive can save meaningful time on large open contours. This would be an example right here. As a one-way adaptive, the tool makes its climb cut along the open contour, but when it reaches the end, it has no choice except to lift up and do a rapid move all the way back to resume a climb cut along that open contour. Contrast that with the same toolpath, but with both ways adaptive, and it's pretty simple. It moves all the way along the cut in a climb cutting manner, and then when it gets to the end, it has to do a little transition or linking move that we can see here where it's following along there, looping around, and then coming immediately back and doing a conventional cut. And that's important to note because there is still some additional motion needed to move from the climb cut back into the conventional cut. Nevertheless, in this sort of an example, the simulation time shows a pretty massive savings. Let's take a look at this actual cut. The traditional adaptive took 45 seconds. That exact same cut, but with both ways adaptive, took 35 seconds. 
So we shaved about 20 to 25% off that toolpath time, which is substantial, but it's not quite as much as the simulated machining time savings implied. It implied that we would cut the toolpath time in half or even better. We're still learning on this, but I think one of the big reasons that the simulation isn't quite as accurate here on the comparison is that the simulation isn't able to account for the machine acceleration and deceleration rates. And that's something that really varies with every CNC machine. Nevertheless, we have found that the machine simulation times are indicative of whether or not you're going to get savings by moving to a both ways adaptive. We have found that it generally isn't going to save you time on pockets. Even an open pocket like this, the implied savings would be from about a two minute and 18 second down to a minute and 58 by going from one way to both ways. But when we ran it, we found it to be just about even and in some cases, it can actually even increase your time. So the takeaway is large open contours like this, or perhaps a more real world example would be a part like this, where we've got a lot of material to remove on a one way adaptive. When we start that cut, it's climb cutting all the way around here. And it doesn't have to do a very long linking move because it can wrap it right over to here and whip around that corner and then continue a clockwise motion around this part. But eventually we're going to get to a spot where the cam algorithm decides it doesn't make sense to continue moving down and it's going to take longer linking moves back and forth. To get a better idea of what's going on in that toolpath, right click, choose machining time, and make sure your rapid feed rate here in Fusion matches your machine's rapid feed rate. And that can be really important to help dialing in the accuracy of the machining time estimates. But also take a look at this. The feed time, which is cut time here, is 7 minutes and 16 seconds, but the rapid time is 3 minutes and 4 seconds. So almost 30% of this overall machining time was spent doing rapid movements. The less total rapid time in a cam operation or the faster your rapid feed rate, the less gain that you're going to realize from switching to a both ways adaptive. In this case, though, we're able to take a toolpath of over 17 minutes and really estimated to cut it in half. You may not get quite that much out of it, but probably a good example of where it's worth exploring. And on that note, yes, there are going to be scenarios where two-way adaptive is going to save you time. I would caveat that by saying you're going to want to test this. Two-way adaptive is going to be dependent on your machine, on your work holding, and on your material, and your need for process reliability. Certain materials, like aluminum, that are more tolerant of conventional machining may do great. Tools like the Shearhog that are unlikely to chip weld, we found do great in it. In other applications or other materials, you're going to want to make use of the reduced radial engagement and the reduced feed rate. The Autodesk put out a video where they recommended backing both of those off to about 85% of the primary adaptive load and feed rate. We actually found so far in our testing with aluminum that those could both be run at 100%. And so we wanted to try steel as well. It is a quarter inch stub length end mill for flute from Lakeshore Carbide with a very small corner radius. Link to that tool in the video description. So similar shape. Similar example, let's take a look at some 4140. And the reason you should test this is, yes, both ways adaptive has the potential, especially on those open contours to save time, but you really don't wanna save time at the expense of process reliability. So we wanna make sure that it's a safe, reliable cut. We're not gonna load up that tool and break it. We're not gonna damage our workpiece. We're not gonna generate so much heat that we ruin tolerance. And we ultimately still end up with a safe, successful cut. So both ways reduced cutting at 4140 in the 770 down from about two minutes to a minute and 13. That's awesome. And remember a few minutes ago when I said to take a look at your total feed time, what we're learning is you get more benefit out of both ways adaptive when you have reduced optimal load or radial cuts as a percentage of your tool diameter, which makes a lot of sense. The thinner you're cutting, the more linking moves you're doing. And the reason that's relevant is especially on steel, we found the Tormox are running great faster feed rates with thinner widths of cut. You get equal or better material removal rates, and we find great service finishes, process reliability, and tool life. So folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care, see you next Wednesday.